Hello everyone and welcome to the starting master mode guide. I am Faceless 11 I have multiple profiles, I've played a lot of this game. Not the greatest for master mode stuff, but I have, you know, played a lot of early master mode stuff, made a lot of mistakes, and a lot of things that I can show you, so you don't make those mistakes. So, for any credentials that I have, Kata 47, played quite a bit, stopped playing like, barely played any M7, and that's why I never really leveled up to Cata 50. So, yeah, that's fine. But let's get right into it. So we're going to be talking about everything from gear to skills to just any miscellaneous things that you may need or need to know to play Master Mode successfully. We're going to start off with gear. So starting it off, we're going to be talking about gear and which class you want to play. So it really depends, okay? So starting off with class. If you are, you know, pretty poor, like I feel like most people who are trying to do Master Mode are, tank is going to be your best option because it is the cheapest to get into successfully. Now, since M3 is the first floor of actual usage in Master Mode, your only real options other than that are, of course, Burrs and Archer. Now, I'm not mentioning Mage or Healer in here because Mage is way too expensive and you usually need higher Kata to pull it off anyways. And healer is not used on M3 because you do not need class XP because M3 just kind of gives such little class XP that's not really worth doing. Now, Burrs and Archer basically have the same setup. Of course, you want to be using a term for this. No jujus allowed here. Please, don't be that guy. You want to have a Terminator. Mine has duplex on it. You don't, you of course, do not need that whatsoever. That is just, that's because I did Kudra a little bit. You need just, just Soul Leader works. You know, just get a term. It doesn't have to be Master Starred. It's nice to have eventually, but just have the term. Other things you may need. Of course, you know, AOTV, Secrets, all that. You know, Ether Warp is so important. Let's just get to the actual really important stuff, though. Stuff like your armor. Now, your armor. Of course, Gold Head for whatever floor you're playing. So, for example, I have a Professor Head here. And then you might want to start off with 3 fourths Necron just to have extra damage, but as you get more confident in Master Mode, you can switch to Max War with the, for the extra speed. Or once you get enough money, have, a, have both. You can swap to Necron and Boss to do more damage, but still have the speed in the clear. Now, when talking about armor, how do you want to go about upgrading your armor first? Gemstones. Please, there are still people that do not understand this. We're talking about Master Stars versus Gemstones. Gemstones are way better for your overall damage and stats. Please do not be the person getting Master Stars first. It's fine if you want to get, like, you know, first star, get it six starred. Or go ahead. But after that, realistically, you should be trying to get perfect gemstones on your armor next. There's going to be such a stat increase, it's so helpful. So that's just, that's your armor. Your armor should be fine. Don't re you don't need Legion 5 right away, but it's nice to get eventually. Now, the other must-haves. Ice Spray. Probably the most important Master Mode tool. The Ice Spray, I will talk about it a little bit later in, just by itself, but the Ice Spray is so important. Because without the Ice Spray, a lot of mini-bosses can be hard to kill. Or not even hard, but just more difficult. So, it's just kind of the best thing to have. A couple other absolute needs. Wither Cloak Sword. Of course, your stonk or whatever you're using. I have an efficiency 10, but it's really up to you. Other things that are nice to have, leaps, just those are just general dungeon items. Same thing with super boom or infinite boom in my case. Just you know, general dungeon stuff. Now let's talk about this iron sword. So, master mode. Yes, it is possible to do without a hype. You can play M M6 easily without a hype. Sure, is it more difficult? Definitely. Can you do it? Yes. Do I recommend it? No. A hype is so unbelievably important for Master Mode, of course, because of the very quick burst healing that you get from it. So please, just whatever you do, just, just use it. Just If you can get one, it, it's more important to get a hype first before playing Master Mode. Master Mode does not make nearly as much money as you think, and a hype is definitely going to help your survivability and overall success. Now, finally, for gear, we're talking about pets. If you're playing a damage class, there is two options here. Ender Dragon? 
I don't have mine on me, but my golden dragon. Those, that's it. And those are your two options. Now, a couple other pets that are great to have. Jellyfish, because it increases the effectiveness of your dungeon potions. You can equip that before you run, drink a potion, then swap to your damage pet. You can set up an auto pet for that. It's very simple. Other things that are nice to have is stuff like a baby yeti, just in case, I don't know, you're an M6 and struggling to live or something. So, you know, just some form of EHP pet can be nice. Do not be using your EHP pet all the time unless you're playing true tank. Please don't do that either. But unless you're playing, like, tank or something, you don't really need the EHP pet, but it's nice to have. Now let's talk about some basic master mode. Etiquette, just tricks. Yeah, tricks. So here we are in M3 now. So some basic things we're going to be talking about. First of all, using your hype, if you have one, right before you walk into a room is one of the best things that you can do. Now, of course, I'm playing Archer and have decent catas, so I absolutely melt mini bosses. But the next mini boss I find, I'm going to be showing you just how crucial an ice spray is for people who do not know already. So, of course, clearing. One thing you want to do that is slightly different than normal dungeons clearing is be more careful. Now what I mean by that is don't be running into rooms and just like running in a big group of mobs. That is how you die and just have a stupid death. So here, when I'm walking into a room, I'm staying back and shooting my term down hallways so I don't have to deal with mobs like just even hitting me. That is what you should be doing. You don't want to be here. I'll show you what not to do. Like let's just say, let's run over here and find a room with mobs like if there's mobs just like a big group or something don't just run in the middle and then try to like turn and shoot it works with archer but again it's still not recommended because as you climb up higher floors it's going to become more deadly all right now where is he there should be a mini boss somewhere in here there he is ice spray now we can't move now you can shoot him that is how crucial an ice spray is for any master mode player now the other weapon that's really nice, Gyrokinetic. I didn't talk about it because it's not as useful, but it's nice to have. So for example, let's just run over here. All these mobs, you can suck them into a circle and just kill them all immediately. Great for clearing like one by ones and stuff that have lots of mobs in them. And just keep note, like anything that's like a one by one, you know, lots of mobs. It's great to be able to use a gyro for that. I wouldn't recommend it as much for mini bosses unless you're in like a weird situation where the thing's like really killing you. You're low and your ice spray is on cooldown. Still wouldn't really recommend using gyro for mini bosses, but it still works. So we're gonna head into boss here. Because the other thing you wanna not forget about, especially when you're playing archer or burrs, or tank, or really just basically any class. Never forget about your abilities. Of course, you know, the classic abilities. Use use your drop key, and then leave control. We're gonna walk in here, and you're just gonna see the power of me using Archer with my abilities, because I'm gonna absolutely melt these guys. I might do it, actually, I might do another run where I don't use my abilities, and we'll see how that goes, but here we go. So we're gonna use our abilities for this. I actually missed my explosive shot, me being the smart guy I am. So there we go. Now let's put that side by side with no abilities. Okay, so here we are back here. Let's kill the professor. Again, the ice spray is nice here, so is the gyro. Um, but the actual strategy you're going to use in M3 is a fire freeze staff. So don't be the guy that's gyroing that phase. It actually really annoys people. So if your party's using fire freeze, which they should be, don't, don't gyro. It kind of ruins everything. So there we go. Professor down. It's very easy at my cata level, but... That's basically most of the tips and tricks, other than just basic dungeon stuff, you know, like clearing before secrets, knowing how to get secrets, you know, good secret routes, all that kind of stuff. You know, all basic dungeon stuff. If you want me to make another video just on just, just base dungeon stuff, let me know, because I can do that at any point. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments down below, and I will see you guys all in the next video.
Peace out.